Well, take a look at this video. It shows the moment that the owner of a Madison tattoo shop left his business, which was in flames. He left it on his motorcycle, then minutes later, he drove into oncoming traffic, taking his own life. The Madison Fire Department said today they believe that fire was arson. Braden Ross joins us now live at the scene of the fire where friends and loved ones have been coming to pay their respects. Braden? Yeah, like you said, Eric, we've seen multiple people come through here leaving flowers and other tributes to 71-year-old Ted Hefner, who died earlier this week. Um, I spoke to one of those friends, someone who actually got her first tattoo from Ted. Here's what she had to say. He's a person, first and foremost, and his life is lost now, and that should be the main focus is somebody's life is lost because of what they were feeling on their emotions, and it's tragic. Days after his passing, friends of Ted Hefner say the shock hasn't worn off. I just can't believe this happened to him. He didn't deserve this. Police said the 71-year-old intentionally drove his motorcycle into oncoming traffic Tuesday morning. Surveillance footage taken minutes before shows Hefner getting on his bike and leaving his tattoo shop in flames. The Madison Fire Department Thursday calling that fire arson. I met him in 2009 when I was working at the Walgreens on Verona Road. I saved up some money from my first paycheck and came over here to him and got my first tattoo. Jacqueline Rivera knew Hefner for more than a decade. He was amazing. He was funny. He would always make you laugh. You would think that you see him how big he is. He's a big tough biker guy like oh my gosh he's intimidating but overall like he's a Teddy bear. She came to the tattoo shop where he lived and worked to leave flowers, something she says he loved. And I know he, no, he won't see it. It means a lot that his spirit will be able to be here. Rivera says it's hard to think about the what ifs. Had a lot of people who were there to support him and would have been there to support him. People who are going through things in life, if you have somebody to talk to, you should talk to them so you don't want to get to this point. I just pray that like his soul is resting and he's riding in peace. Now the Madison Fire Department told me today on their end the case is closed, the investigation is done. Madison police though are still investigating both this fire and the crash on the Beltline. For now in Madison, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. Braden, thank you. We turn now to weather and a look at your first warned forecast with meteorologist Jacob Matasano on the outdoor weather patio. Jacob. Thanks, Eric. It is very nice outside. I have to say very beautiful skies and the, although there's a little bit of wind and there's also a bug on the camera, uh, it actually kind of the wind makes it feel a little bit better. But current temperature 77 degrees a north northwest wind at nine miles per hour. For the most part, we are seeing clear skies and a lot of southern Wisconsin ceiling very nice temperatures as well with most of the area in the 70s and considering it's the middle of July, we will definitely take these nice temperatures. Now, unfortunately, it is Thursday and I have to talk about the drought monitor. And despite the rainfall we saw last week, a lot of southern Wisconsin continues to see severe and extreme drought. There was only a small part of southern Wisconsin that improved from last week. It really just shows you how much rain we need to get out of this drought, considering just how bad it has been, especially for May and June. Now, as far as this month goes, we actually are above average in precipitation. But since June 1st, and especially since the beginning of the year, we are seeing below average, below average precipitation, and we certainly need a lot of, of the rainfall in order to get out of the drought. Now, for tonight's forecast, it is going to be a bit chilly tonight with clear skies and relatively calm winds. The winds will still be a little breezy, but not too bad. Lows will be in the upper 50s. Now, definitely enjoy the nice weather while it lasts because it's going to be pretty hot for portions of next week. I'll talk more in detail about just how hot it could get coming up a bit later in the show. Jacob, thank you. New at 5, a 45-year-old Janesville man has been arrested in connection to a body that was found in the Rock in Rock in the Rock in Rock County rather. After an autopsy, the body was identified as 37-year-old Judy Sprigler, who'd been missing since July 12th when she was last spotted leaving her home. The cause of death is pending, awaiting toxicology results. The 45-year-old man is facing tentative charges of mutilating or hiding a corpse. After weeks of investigating a condo explosion on Madison's west side, fire officials say they are unable to fully determine what caused that fire. Earlier in their investigation, crews said a propane tank in the garage likely caused the incident, but since then, investigators have identified natural gas-fueled appliances as another potential fuel source. They say a 20-pound propane tank attached to a grill was left with the valve on. What ignited the gas prompting the explosion remains unclear. The next thing we need to figure out is what was the trigger that caused the explosion? What was the ignition source? That we really don't know because 
it's just really hard to find the evidence that helps conclude that. Um, witness statements are critical, but even that, you know, you, sometimes the, the people who are right there don't even know. So we're still working on those things. Investigators say they weren't able to safely excavate certain parts of the garage, which limited their ability to fully investigate the damage. A new study out of the UW School of Medicine and Public Health finds nursing home residents benefited from rapid flu testing. That study consisted of two groups of nursing facilities, one that used rapid tests on residents who had at least two minor flu symptoms and a control group that followed standard infection control guidance. The control group did not have on-site testing. The nursing homes that did rapid testing saw emergency room visits decline by 22%, hospitalizations decline by 21%, and hospital length of stay declined by 36%. We asked, uh, how did this re affect your response time to an outbreak in influenza? And overwhelmingly, they said it really shortened response time. The nursing homes that participated were so happy with the results that nine out of ten wanted to continue with the rapid testing and treatment after the study ended. A Fenimore family facing tragedy has turned to advocacy taking to the state capitol today to get a life-saving device into schools. Political reporter Will Keneally has more. Will? So we brought you their story a few years ago. The Brigmans lost their son to a choking accident. In the years since, they have been advocating for a piece of equipment that could save choking victims' lives. It's a mask that fits over a person's face using a plunger-like piece to suction out whatever's blocking their airway. Now, the Brigmans have worked in the years since donating the devices to local EMS services and are pushing today for a bill that would place them in schools alongside first aid kits. Actually, I reached out to um, Representative Trannel about four or five years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's been a while that we've been working on this. Obviously, I've learned through my son passing away that you literally have seconds. You know, so it's like to actually, for the school to have it in the building, and they can just grab it and use it if the Heimlich and the back blows fail, instead of, you know, waiting on the ambulance or waiting on the police car. So there's some pushback. Officials with the Department of Public Instruction expressed concerns that schools would have to shoulder the cost of the devices themselves, which is roughly $70, but also training the, or the cost to train the staff on them. Now, they say staff could be broadly trained for first responses or first aid responses generally, um, and that these choking incidences primarily affect younger kids and the elderly. Now, this is the first hearing on the bill, which will still have to work its way through both the Assembly and Senate. Reporting from the Capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Will, thanks. And looking ahead to the weekend, Goodman Pool will be closed as that facility starts preparing for next week's all-city swim meet. The pool will be closed this Friday through the 31st. The big event will be held next Thursday, the 27th through Saturday, the 29th. More than 7,000 participants, volunteers, and spectators are expected to attend the all-city meet. Madison's Parks Division says lifeguards will be placed at Vilas and Warner Beaches from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. during the duration of the swim meet to compensate for the Goodman Pool closure. We've covered the issue of rising rents in Madison quite a bit tonight. We're looking how it's impacting a local business as a Madison salon prepares to downsize. Jalen Banks joins us now with more. Jalen. Eric, Angela Schultz has been the owner of Rocket Betty Salon for 12 years, and the business has been located at 1423 South Park Street for the last five. Madison's Rocket Betty Salon is in the middle of downsizing after an increase in their monthly building rate increased by $700 at the beginning of this year. Schultz will be moving into an in-home studio by the beginning of the fall, but says the change is bittersweet. It's definitely very bittersweet, you know, that um, I won't necessarily be the hair boss anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to be the hair boss of myself. But um, I feel that that is kind of the way that the industry is going. Madison ranks 38th in median overall rent among the 100 largest cities in the U.S. Also, Madison ranks first in year-over-year -year growth in rate and rent prices at 14.1%. And this business means everything to Angela. Coming up at six, coming up at six, we'll hear why she got it started in the first place. All right, Jalen, thank you. Dane County Fair back in Madison this week bringing plenty of food and fun with it. The event kicked off this morning at Alliant Energy Center. Each day has a theme. Today was Hometown Hero Day. Tomorrow is Kids Day. Saturday is Farm Fresh Day. And Sunday is Family Day. And while the fair is a great place to grab a bite to eat and go on some thrilling rides, you can also check out what local exhibitors have brought to show off. 
we are actually a very, very urban area, and this is a very rural fair. So for people to come and see these projects that these uh, 4-H SFA members, exhibitors put on, it's huge. They've worked on these projects all year, and people to come see and talk to them and educate them on their behalf is something truly special. Admission to the fair runs 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. all four days. There's a lot going on during those hours as well, from free concerts to animal shows. You can find the full schedule of events to help plan your trip on their website, danecountyfair.com. Coming up, Jacob has our complete first warn forecast, plus how a rare tornado in North Carolina could impact the nation's drug supply. And later, News 3 Now launching a new segment to keep you up to date on the weather. We'll have the details next hour on News 3 Now at 6. And on Wall Street today, mixed numbers as the Dow makes a decent jump, adding 164 points with the NASDAQ. Nose dives off 295. The S&P loses 31. We'll be right back. It's your last chance to get Black Friday mattress deals at Ashley. Get the all-new Temper Breeze for just $83 a month. Or get this Queen Pillow Top mattress for just $9 a month, all with no money down. Don't miss. Only at Ashley. Create your perfect room for entertaining, relaxing, and more with patio enclosures. Right now, get 25% off your sunroom. Plus, enjoy exceptional financing. Call today. Patio enclosures. This is Matt Gunderson. We recently celebrated the life of George, loved by many, feared by walleye. As part of his fishing theme celebration, everyone in attendance accepted one of his favorite lures. Allow us to personalize every detail of a life well lived. This summer, happiness is a new Chevy. You can go farther, tow more, and bring along everyone you love. Your road to happiness begins in a new Chevy. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LT Turbo Max pickups, or current Chevy owners get 5750 total cash allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. Create the ultimate backyard getaway with 11% off everything at Menards. We have the best selection of decking, blocks, grills, and outdoor furniture to transform your yard from ordinary to extraordinary. With so many options and styles to choose from, you'll find something perfect for you to enjoy the rest of your summer. Right now, get this four-burner gas grill for $199.99 after 11% rebate at Menards. Attention, Wisconsin veterans. I'm Tony Evers, the governor of Wisconsin. If you are a veteran struggling to pay for rent, utilities, or other life-sustaining services, I want you to know that the Veterans Rental Assistance Program is here to help. So call 833-WISVRAP or visit VRAPWI.com. You've always been there for us. We want you to know that we're here for you. It's your last chance to get Black Friday deals at Ashley. Find in-stock doorbusters at discounts up to 60% off. Plus, get bonus discounts on clearance items and special buys. And low monthly payment options starting at just $9 a month. Only at Ashley. I just pray that, like, his soul is resting and he's riding in peace. Tonight on News 3 Now, we learn more about the Madison man killed in a motorcycle crash shortly after flames sprouted in his tattoo shop. We'll hear from someone who knew him personally from damaging drought to catastrophic flooding and severe storms in every season, the News 3 Now First Warn Weather Team gives you a deeper understanding of Wisconsin's ever-changing weather with special reports that go beyond the barometer. Tonight at 6. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. A federal grand jury met today to discuss whether to indict former President Trump over his role in the events of January 6th and alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Over the past year, the Justice Department has spoken to members of the former president's inner circle, from White House aides to the former vice president. They've also interviewed various state officials. Arizona's former governor is among those who've been contacted, according to a spokesman. Republican Doug Ducey says he received a call from then-President Trump while certifying the state's 2020 election results. If Trump is charged, it will be his third criminal indictment as he continues to be the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination. Parts of North Carolina were slammed by an EF3 tornado yesterday, but the impact of that weather disaster could have even bigger consequences after a Pfizer manufacturing plant sustained significant damage. Mike Valerio reports. A North Carolina Pfizer plant slammed Wednesday by an EF3 tornado. 
One of the largest facilities manufacturing sterile injectable drugs in the world, the site supplies more than a quarter of such medications used in U.S. hospitals. A sterile injectable is really any drug that you give by IV, and it affects lots of aspects of American healthcare, from the operating room with anesthesia to infectious disease and a whole host of other medicines. Now, as the company assesses the damage to gauge the impact, experts are concerned Pfizer's lost product and production capability could have significant consequences in hospitals across the country. I'm really afraid that some patients will get suboptimal care and there may be an uh, increase in lives lost. Physicians and supply chain experts also fear this event could exacerbate the nation's ongoing drug shortages. I have about 300 drugs in short supply now in the United States. Dr. Peter Chin Hong of the University of California, San Francisco says there are several key factors contributing to the shortages, including increased demand, scarcity in raw materials from overseas, and a lack of transparency in the supply chain. It's a multimodal problem that needs a lot of interventions from different aspects. But he says if you rely on a medication currently in short supply, don't panic. Find out what the alternatives are, but make sure you talk to your healthcare provider because not all alternatives are created equal. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. That same tornado tore across 16 and a half miles of North Carolina for about 30 minutes yesterday. Several homes and buildings were damaged and dozens of trees were torn from their roots. Meanwhile, a state of emergency remains in effect in Kentucky after record rainfall triggered widespread flooding. We are not uh, fully out of the woods yet. Multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms are expected in the region throughout today uh, and through tonight. The main impacts will be damaging winds, lightning, and unfortunately more heavy rainfall. Across the nation, sweltering temperatures are shattering records. In Arizona, at least 18 people have now died from the heat. Experts say dozens of high temperature records could be broken by Saturday. Well, let's get a look at our first warm forecast now. Meteorologist Jacob Matasano with the latest. Jacob. Yeah, our forecast has been uh, pretty tame compared to the stories you had mentioned, but we are dealing with a pretty significant drought. So I guess that's our extreme weather that we are dealing with. Now, as far as the three things you need to know, we are going to be warm throughout the weekend. Highs in the low to mid 80s. Overall, though, it'll be pretty close to average. We have a few chances of storms Saturday night and Sunday afternoon, but we're not expected to see significant rainfall with those storms. And then we are going to be pretty hot for next week with highs in the 90s, possibly even mid 90s and heat index values could be even higher. Looking at the current radar across the Midwest, we are seeing a fair amount of the Midwest pretty dry right now, especially southern Wisconsin. There is a lot of rain off way to the west of us, but we're, like I mentioned, we're not expected to see a ton of rainfall for the foreseeable future, especially tomorrow and most of Saturday. We are going to be dry, but beginning Saturday evening, later in the evening, we could see some showers and storms moving into our area, and then we have another chance of some showers and storms Sunday afternoon, but neither of these threats of rain will be widespread, probably not going to produce a ton of rainfall as well. So so we're not expected to see a lot of rainfall and that will continue into next week as well as those temperatures will warm up. So as far as the precipitation outlook for the next seven days, we likely will be below an inch, probably even below a half inch. Some areas may not see any rainfall at all over the next seven days. So unfortunately, next week's drought monitor may continue to see areas get worse. Now, as far as the temperatures goes, tonight's going to be pretty chilly, actually, compared to average with parts of our area, especially off to the north, dropping into the lower 50s with much of our area dropping into at least the 50s with clear skies and then tomorrow is going to be pretty comfortable with highs right around 80 degrees for a lot of locations. Some areas to the south may actually stay in the upper 70s. So definitely enjoy the nice weather while it lasts because it's going to be pretty hot next week. Saturday will be fairly nice for the most part again with high temperatures in the mid 80s with a slight chance of some storms overnight. Now here's a look at the temperature forecast for the next six to 10 days. Much of the United States, especially the center portion of the United States, will see well above average temperatures and you can see that firsthand with the 10 day temperature forecast. Highs will be in the 90s for several straight days, possibly even mid 90s for Thursday and Friday. And those heat index values will be in the mid to upper 90s with possibly some areas seeing the heat index values close to 100 degrees. So we have a slight chance of some storms Saturday night, Sunday and Monday. But for the most part, we're going to be dry with a pretty hot temperatures for the middle and end of the week. As far as your first warned traffic goes across Madison, we're only seeing a few uh, rush hour slowdowns nothing extreme. There is a pretty significant slowdown on 51, but there's an even uh, bigger slowdown up further north on 90 where the 
westbound lane, it goes as uh, slow as six miles per hour. So if you do have to, if you are traveling that far north on I-90, just be prepared. You might want to detour around this because outside of that small stretch, it is very clear. And that's your first one traffic. All right, Jacob, thank you. As we mentioned, much of the country in the midst of a heat wave. Extreme summer temperatures, though, aren't just dangerous for our bodies, also for our vehicles. The summer sun can take its toll on our cars and lead to a breakdown, and that's why it's important to make sure engine oil and other fluids are full, including your coolant, which prevents overheating. In this heat, a car's interior can reach extreme temperatures and damage some devices like cell phones. And, of course, keeping your tires properly inflated is also crucial. Underinflated tires concentrate pressure on the inner and outer edge of the tire, which causes a heat buildup here. And when you're driving in hot climates, that heat buildup on the corners of the tire or the edges of the tire by the sidewall can lead to sudden blowouts and tire failure. And experts suggest keeping an emergency kit in your vehicle with water, jumper cables, first aid supplies, and a portable battery charger for your devices. They also say leaving a towel over the seats while you're not in the vehicle can help them cool off and improve comfort when you return to your vehicle. Conservation groups say a recent Supreme Court decision leaves thousands of vulnerable ecosystems at risk. Next at 5, the creative workarounds these groups are using to protect our waterways and wetlands. Stay with us. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Right, a chip. <clears throat> Just taking a break. That window's a bear. Don't worry. My cousin's got a guy. <laughs> Hey, I'm not sure I can help you with the house gas, but I can help you replace this window fast. Let the experts at Feldco kickstart your summer with two-for-one windows and no interest until 2025. Plus, we'll get it done with Feldco fast. Two-for-one windows won't last long. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for feldco Set summer in motion with the most electrifying Honda vehicles yet, like the CRV and the Accord both with available hybrid powertrains, designed to deliver more thrilling performance and more innovative tech. Make every adventure more electrifying with Honda, the most awarded brand in car and driver 10 best history. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today. Here's your parachute. Certain it's okay? Are you foreign print certain? Certainty matters, so congratulate coworkers or say thank you with promotional products from 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. I'm saving with Liberty Mutual, Mom. They customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. You could save $700 just by switching. Oh, let me put a reminder on my phone. On the top of the pile. Yeah. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Stanley Steamer loves Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Paul Ashick, local owner of Stanley Steamer here in Madison. We've been proudly cleaning your homes and businesses for over 30 years and will continue to keep your carpet, upholstery, area rugs, hard floors, and air ducts clean for many more. We strive to provide the best quality in both the services we provide and the equipment we use. That's why you've trusted us to keep Madison and southwestern Wisconsin homes cleaner, healthier, and more beautiful place to live. Call and book a cleaning today. Stanley Steamer, it's your home cleaner. Creating family memories is what Maple Leaf Landscaping is all about. We design and build outdoor spaces that bring people together. Landscaped spaces for any size family. Functional, beautiful, a place everyone will enjoy. And it all starts with a free visit at your home by one of our landscape experts. So call Maple Leaf Landscaping today and have us create an outdoor living space for your home. Madison's massive Factory Direct Hot Tub and Swim Spa Show. Save up to 50% off hundreds of quality brand hot tubs and swim spas. Flexible financing. Everything must go. And Sunday at Madison Marriott West. EliteSpaSales.com Won't you come with me to the Wisconsin? Something for everyone at the Wisconsin State Fair presented by U.S. Cellular August 3rd through the 13th. You're watching News 3 Now at 5.
Right now, conservation groups across the country are taking new approaches to safeguard temporary waterways in their own backyards. Skylar Henry tells us the latest push follows the Supreme Court's recent decision to strip away federal protections for some wetlands, leaving them at risk for pollution. Keeping areas like these protected recently became murkier for Colin O'Meara. Over the last 20, 30 years, we tried to restore a lot of habitat here, had some kind of responsible redevelopment on the other side. He's the CEO and executive director of the National Wildlife Federation and says this Delaware wetland is now more exposed following a May Supreme Court ruling narrowing regulations. And these are some of the most important systems to protect our health, protect us from flooding, protect us for, for water quality, and they're all at risk right now. The Sackett versus EPA decision makes it harder for the federal government to police water pollution in isolated wetlands, the same wetlands that were once covered under the Clean Water Act. The 5-4 vote said that wetlands can only be regulated if they have continuous surface connection. Abby Tierna, who lives in Florida, worries about the more than 31% of wetlands in that state that don't meet that criteria. If we want clean water, that's almost impossible in the state of Florida without recognizing the contribution of wetlands. Her Suncoast Waterkeeper nonprofit has gone after local municipalities for irresponsibly disposing of waste prior to the ruling. She says forcing new ordinances on the local and state level helps push back against land development interests. Just because you can't see the connection doesn't mean the connection doesn't exist. There's a large body of research right now that does show the connection via groundwater, uh, animals, energy, nutrient transfers. These are the systems that are going to protect us from, from climate change, and if we don't protect them now, we're going to regret it later. O'Meara says he's focused on coordinated state protections with hopes of finding a consensus soon. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. Congress could amend the Clean Water Act to include those vulnerable wetlands, but past efforts to lay out and legislate a true definition of waters of the United States have fallen short. And we're back with a final check of your first warn forecast after a short break. Fry Construction invites you to celebrate summer with our hot summer sale. We're talking about hot savings of 23%. Many of your neighbors already know how we strive to meet and exceed expectations with each and every project. That's why they voted us best roofer three years in a row. Experience the best of Madison for yourself with Fry Construction. Get on board for our hot summer sale. Save 23% off gutters with any full roofing or siding project. Schedule your consultation today at FryConstruction.com. Summer fun means one thing. It's time to visibly say goodbye to crow's feet, fine lines, wrinkles, and under eye bags, and say hello to smooth, beautiful, younger looking skin in 10 minutes with Plexiderm. Oh my God, I can't believe I have no lines in my face. I'm like 20 years younger. Plexiderm smooths away wrinkles without foundation, without color makeup, and without expensive procedures. And it works in 10 minutes. Plus the results last up to 10 hours. And Best of all, you could try it for only $14.95 this summer. This isn't the first time I've been on TV raving about this product. It's amazing. My friends, my family, they can't believe it. There's been creams, there's been lotions. Nothing works like this. We were away on vacation. If you go down to the islands, they always want to take you in a booth and put some stuff on you. And my husband said, boy, that stuff really works. And I said, I washed this off hours ago. This is Plexiderm. This is what works. When I tried Plexiderm the first time, my daughter said, oh, Dad, did you get a haircut? And I said, no, I tried this Plexiderm product out. Oh, you look so much younger. I said, oh, thank you. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell clay. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing under eye bags and wrinkles from view in minutes. The science is incredible, but the results are even better. No, this looks really good. All these lines are gone. Amazing. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I look amazing. It's like so full of myself. <laughs> I've had under eye bags for a very long time and it sucks. Finally, I tried something called Plexiderm. I put it on my face and I'm not joking. It works. So take action this summer and pack up your under eye bags and wrinkles and put them on vacation with Plexiderm. Try our summertime special and get it for only $14.95. Plus, get free shipping. Visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. 
Madison Magazine's Summer Restaurant Week is here. Participating restaurants will provide a three-course meal starting at $30 featuring wine and more starting July 23rd through the 28th. For a list of participating restaurants' menus and details, visit madisonrestaurantweek.com. It's a perfect opportunity to sample some of Madison's local restaurants. Don't miss Madison Magazine's Summer Restaurant Week 2023. Presenting sponsor, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund. Supporting sponsor, Bergstrom Cadillac and Chevrolet. Wine sponsor, Delicato and Frederick Wildman. We've got a lot of news coming up. A message to young people about shooting for the stars. We go person to person with record-breaking astronaut Peggy Whitson. That and more news tonight right here on the CBS Evening News. And Jacob rejoins us once again with a check of the forecast. Yeah, people should really enjoy the weather we're going to see uh, tomorrow and for the most part Saturday because it's going to be very nice with highs near 80, but more so because of what we're going to see next week with the temperatures easily getting into the 90s at times. We also have a slight chance of some rain Saturday night, Sunday and Monday, but we're not expected to see a lot of rainfall with the threat of rain we're seeing over the weekend. But as we look, the high temperatures, especially Thursday and Friday, could reach the mid to upper 90s with the heat index values possibly close to 100 because it is going to be a bit humid. So likely going to see the hottest temperatures so far this year. And this also will it also will be hot on Wednesday for concerts on the square. So just prepare for uh, the hot temperatures, especially if you have outdoor plants. Plans, uh, for next week. A lot of people going to that all city swim meet. The pool might be the place to be right <laughs> next Thursday through Saturday. Thanks for joining us at five. We're back in 30 minutes. Produce three now at six and stay tuned right now.